Alcohol is the most common psychoactive drug in the world, and it has immediate effects on the brain and body. It penetrates the blood-brain barrier and wrecks havoc on nearly every region, sending some neural circuits into overdrive while putting others to sleep. At the heart of alcohol's influence on the brain is its interaction with the GABA-A receptor. You can think of GABA as a key player in the brain's ability to regulate its activity. The GABA-A receptor is part of a complex system that helps keep our brain's excitability in check, acting much like a brake in the central nervous system. When alcohol enters the brain, it targets these receptors, enhancing their inhibitory effects and leading to the dampening of neural activity across the brain. This helps explain the wide spectrum of behaviors that are observed in inebriated individuals. However, it does show slight favoritism for causing turmoil within four critical brain regions, the prefrontal cortex, the hippocampus, the cerebellum, and our reward pathways. The prefrontal cortex serves as the brain's executive officer, wielding top-down control over decision-making, impulse restraint, rational thought, and a host of other analytical functions. It meticulously modulates the electrical excitability of neurons across the brain with the action of GABA to prevent inappropriate firing at inappropriate times. This includes enforcing societal norms that we have learned over a lifetime, such as don't pick your nose or pull your pants down mid-conversation. Alcohol insidiously binds to and inhibits these very circuits, a process known as disinhibition. This undermines our self-control, nudges us towards less rational decisions, and erodes the social guardrails established by our normally attentive prefrontal cortex. The result is alcohol acts as a sedative. It eases stress and induces a hypnotic state, liberating the brain from the very rules, constraints, and boundaries it has meticulously constructed over a lifetime. The next region is the hippocampus, the region crucial for learning and memory, where alcohol's interference is twofold. It starts by dampening neural activity by acting on the same GABA-A receptors, disrupting the normal memory processes. But also at the same time, alcohol inhibits excitatory NMDA receptors, essential for the process of long-term potentiation. This is the mechanism by which we strengthen neuronal connections, effectively how we learn and encode new memories. This dual action not only impairs their ability to form new memories, but is also the underlying cause of alcohol-induced blackouts. Next is the cerebellum, our small brain, which is essential for balance and fine motor control. The presence of alcohol in this region particularly affects the cerebellum's Purkinje cells, neurons unique for their extensive dendritic arms and critical role in coordinating movement. Alcohol's interference with these cells' electrical activity compromises the precision of motor signals, leading to to impaired coordination. This is termed ataxia, categorized by a lack of coordination, difficulties with smooth movements, tremors, and balance issues. Additionally, alcohol's impact on the cerebellum contributes to slurred speech and slowed reaction times, things anyone who has drank alcohol is pretty familiar with. We now move to the final and often most devastating effect of alcohol on the brain, how it hijacks our reward pathways specifically the mesolimbic dopamine pathway. This pathway originates in the ventral tegmental area or VTA of the midbrain located here, and it projects to the nucleus accumbens in the forebrain over there, with connections to other brain regions, such as the amygdala and prefrontal cortex. This circuit is critical for our most primal desires, like food, sex, and social interaction. Dopamine motivates survival behaviors and reinforces the pleasure of that pursuit, not the pursuit of pleasure as is so commonly believed. Once again, ethanol goes to work manipulating GABA-A circuitry and relieving the inhibition on dopamine neurons, triggering the cascading surges of dopamine and opiates which flood into the nucleus accumbens. This triggers deep feelings of euphoria, but it's a very common misconception that this pleasure is caused by dopamine directly when it's actually the opiates that are causing that effect. Dop Dopamine plays an even more insidious role in this whole process. See, our brains have evolved to recognize activities associated with dopamine release as beneficial for our survival. Alcohol short circuits this system, falsely signaling that what you're doing, which is drinking, is extremely beneficial for well-being and survival, creating a positive association feedback loop. 
One thing I can say for certain is that this is not critical to the survival of our species. This is the primary role of dopamine, as this euphoric cycle repeats a powerful association develops between alcohol intake and immense pleasure. The brain's reward pathways reshape themselves, increasing motivation to drink and weakening impulse control. This is the core mechanism driving addiction and why alcohol is so dangerous. Alcohol also greatly disrupts our sleep architecture, particularly targeting REM sleep, a critical phase for memory consolidation and emotional processing. This suppression is due to alcohol's effect on the neurotransmitter systems, notably serotonin and noradrenaline, which play a key role in entering and maintaining REM sleep phases. Overall, alcohol-induced sleep is fragmented, and this disruption in REM can impair cognitive functions, emotional regulation, and memory consolidation showcasing alcohol's profound impact on the brain's restorative processes. Chronic and heavy alcohol consumption triggers profound structural and functional brain alterations. Advanced imaging studies have shown that excessive drinking can cause the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus to shrink, leading to significant cognitive impairments, memory deficits, decision-making troubles, and an elevated risk of dementia. Furthermore, alcohol's repeated assault on neuronal communication erodes the integrity of essential brain networks that make us, us. I think this crucial insight into addiction often gets overshadowed in societal discussions. Alcoholism, rather than being met with empathy and support, is very often stigmatized, pushing those affected further into the margins instead of towards the help that they fully need. Understanding addiction as a complex psychological condition, one that disrupts the brain circuitry much like any other psychiatric condition, challenges us to reconsider our perceptions. It's easy to dismiss alcoholism as self-inflicted, but it's not merely a matter of self-discipline. Genetic factors and life circumstances play significant roles, making anyone potentially vulnerable. If this discussion strikes a chord or prompts you to reflect on your own relationship with alcohol, remember that seeking help is a sign of strength and not weakness. Science-backed treatments, including behavioral therapies, appropriate medications, and supportive community networks, offer real paths to recovery. Seeking a healthier life takes immense courage, powered by those same brain circuits that alcohol distorts over time. Your drive for well-being and your capacity for change. Thanks so much for watching the video. Share it with anyone that you think might benefit. Subscribe for more impactful neuroscience, and please drink responsibly. Thank you so much.